we need to know for this chapter sine square x plus cosine square x is one that's a review secant square x minus tangent square x is also one and then what's the last one do you know x minus x sub zero squared and y minus y sub zero squared add together get r squared what is that oh good job people know circle centered at what exactly thank you circle centered let me know if my handwriting is what is this circle centered at sometimes they call it x naught y naught or x sub zero y sub zero radius what radius r so not r square radius r that's a circle do you know how to write down the ellipse so i'll remind you because we will have it here ellipse or ellipsoid shapes it's basically a circle but now it has two radii uh, one is wider than another one and it can be any higher or lower so that means now there's not one radius anymore so ellipse has a shape x minus x sub zero it's still centered at x sub zero y sub zero but divided by a and that's a stretch a squared a stretch or a shrink for the one of the sides, y minus y sub zero squared over b squared equals one. So a and b are those two radii for the lengths or widths uh, of the ellipse, elliptic shapes. That's a pretty cool idea. So now we're gonna start introduction of something really amazing. You've seen it before, but you don't know. We're gonna explain you how did you say it in calculus one class. I'm telling you in calculus three, takes calculus one and just explodes the idea of upper dimensions so slowly we're gonna we're getting there what if let's go call it chapter parametrix para, paranormal parametrix parametric form para, parametric form of the equation so we always had y equals something of x y equals f of x what if both x and y depend on a third variable called parameter for example f of t and g of t at the same time then t is now a new input and it's called a parameter parameter it can be anything if it's t usually it's time so it's third dimension we're kind of introducing third dimension here as time but it can be g gravity t can be temperature and so on so now x remember americans usually they teach run and rise x is run y is rise nobody else calls it this way by the way so uh the idea here is now run depends on t a third variable and rise depends on t on third variable that is the pretty cool idea here so they also uh we've seen it before when we had related rates we introduced t and the related rates chapter in calculus one class and i'll show you later like how does it make sense to introduce something common they now have a common variable t the thing is so put this in a box the problem is the moment you reintroduce your x and y's variables and domain everything will be reintroduced we're going to redo the whole calculus that's what calculus three is we're doing the whole calculus for upper dimensions in this case we're introducing t as a variable that takes us to upper dimension then everything will be different now let's remember how we started in calculus one we introduced functions x and y's what is input what is output uh, independent variable dependent variable t now is my new input right but then we started with limits after limits we did derivatives everything will be different now derivatives how to find dy over dx such a simple question but now we're working with t the thing is dy now based on the chain rule will have derivative with respect to t so we will have d y with respect to t at the top and dx with respect to t at the bottom that is the formula it's not quotient rule by the way it's just derivative of the rise over derivative of the run how fast does the function change does dy or dx 
Well, as fast as the rise changing over run changing. Let's call it formula number star. Star formula. That's a derivative. 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 Do you know how to say derivative in Russian? Производная. Because it derives. And derives is производитель. Производная. So, now the new thing, if derivative is different now, everything will be different. So all the formulas we learned from the derivative are different, which are areas, arc lengths. You name it, everything will be new. And I did show you before the new formula for arc lengths, L. The new formula for arc lengths, I mentioned to you before, and I said we're going to cover it in this class. From A to B, like in my previous classes, student says a gigantic square root. I like this word, gigantic square root. What used to be inside? Who remembers? Y, y prime squared. That's the gigantic square root, 1 plus derivative squared, integral from A to B, dy or dx. So now we have both derivatives happening at the same time. Before we had only one derivative, y prime. Now we have both, y prime and x prime. So we're going to do that. Each derivative will show up. Derivative with respect to t, don't forget to square it, plus derivative with respect to t, but now of y. Don't forget to square it. So we have an integral from a to b, derivative squared plus derivative squared. With respect to what variable are we integrating? I see three dt that is a very interesting idea that now we see three variable x is a variable y is a variable and t is the variable but we're integrating with the inner one t t is the inside input so in calculus 2 we're going to introduce double integral right it will be dt dx for example and finally triple integral dy so we're going to go to two dimensions three dimensions through double integral that will be volumes and everything like that. And the third dimension, so three dimension takes you to four dimension. And the four dimension seems like to be not practical, uh, which is not true at all. Four dimension usually is not a hypercube, unless you really want geometry and stuff. It's pretty fun. But actually, it's some kind of quality of the two dimension, uh, three dimensional object. So we're going to introduce that literally the first classes of calculus three. The idea will be that I'm a three-dimensional object that's double integral. My volume, volume of my body is double integral, volume of my brain. But then the temperature inside of it, that's the third, that's the fourth dimension. It's a quality of a three-dimensional object. So the third integral tells you how the temperature of my brain changes. Or for you to know temperature of lungs is not the same as temperature of other organs. Or the color of my eyes or your eyes. When you look through the eyeball, they are different where you scan through. So double integral gives you volume, and then triple integral gives you a quality, for example, of that volume, temperature, color, gravitational forces, and so on. So it's a pretty cool idea. When you are skating to school, you're a three-dimensional object moving through the wind, wind pushing you away. That's a fourth-dimensional behavior, and we're going to do that too. It's pretty cool. Put this in the box. That's going to go to the exam three as well. Those formulas are already there. I already put them there. And it's like very straightforward. They just ask you, find a derivative. Just do that. Find the in, uh, length, arc lengths. Just do that. So let's practice the arc lengths. Kind of thinking to make a new video. Yeah, let's do new.